Namaste. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to class. So we're going to start this first part out with me kind of close because I want to do a, a breath practice that I think it's better if you see me than if I'm way back there and you have a, a harder time seeing me. So and later on at the end, when we have our little talk, if you'd like to discuss this pranayama for a little bit, that would be fabulous. So just to think about that, okay? So again, namaste, welcome to class. Let's start with our invocation. So just allowing your spine to grow tall, your eyes, maybe that your gaze can drift to the floor or you can close them completely. And just resting your hands on the legs or in the lap. For just a moment, release the base that you're on. If you're holding any of your bottom tight, let it go. And just notice where your breath is in the body. And then after a few soft, gentle breaths, bringing your hands into the heart, Anjali Mudra. With gratitude, we salute all the great yoga masters, past and present, with joy, we recognize the excellent wisdom teachings of yoga, Ayurveda, and with vigor, we dedicate ourselves to self-transforming practice. So take just a moment and think about what you need for self-transformation today, just today. Let that thought blossom for a little bit, let it grow. And then let the thought just drop down into your heart space and we'll bring it back at the end of class. If you are where you can, join me in one resounding OM. Exhaling the breath out and inhale to chant. OM. Namaste. Okay, so this morning, the, the pranayam that occurred to me as I was going to bed last night, and when I got up this morning, <laughs> that I should be teaching today is Kapalabhati. Okay, and I know a lot of us know Kapalabhati, or we, we, we envision that we know Kapalabhati. And I just want to go over the mechanics of it. Kapalabhati means skull shining. So it's like shining your skull. So when you've completed that practice of Kapalabhati, you should feel like you just had a, a very expensive vacuum cleaner, just clear out the garbage <laughs> and your whole head region should really feel it. So Kapalabhati really cleanses that Udana Vayu, the function of something going out of the body. So singing, talking, spitting, vomiting, uh, exhaling, everything that's going up and out of the body is controlled by Udana Vayu. And so Kapalabhati really stimulates and tones that area, right? So oftentimes we do that as a breath that starts down in the belly. And I want to encourage you to list, just leave your belly muscles alone. Those belong to Agni Sardoti, another practice. <laughs> and let Kapalabhati be more diaphragmatic in nature, right? So this, this is the part right here that's moving right at the ribs. So your diaphragm is really what's pumping that air. So I'm going to do a really brief, I'm going to turn on my original sound so you can hear it all. Okay. Um, so because I want you to hear what's happening with the exhalation. Okay. So I'm going to start the practice by inhaling in a, a, a breath of about 80% and then start exhaling. And every single time I exhale, it's a forced exhale followed by a natural inhale. Forced exhale, natural inhale. I'm gonna do it relatively slow to start, and you're welcome to practice along with me as you go just to see what happens. And then we're gonna pause, and then we're gonna do it again, okay? So just exhaling the breath out, and I have to be quiet so I can do it.
So that was 30 forced exhales. My belly may move a little because my diaphragm is like a trampoline and somebody's jumping on it, right? So you might see it move, but I'm not pulling in my abdominal muscles. I'm really relying on the flexibility all the way around my diaphragm to do that contract, release, contract, release, contract, release, contract, release. Um, I'm even going to pull this shirt up just a little, just so you can see what happens with the belly. So do it with me, but kind of watch this time, and then we'll go into the practice where we're not really worried about looking and seeing what's happening. So I'm going to exhale the breath out, and then I'll have to be quiet because I'm going to inhale in and begin. And then I inhale in again, and I can start again. So either of those ways is fine, right? S but the breath is happening right here in the diaphragm, not up here in this, but just right here, moving the breath out, okay? So let's try that together. We're going to do two, maybe two rounds of anywhere between 24 to 36, okay? So just kind of pick in there a couple of rounds. We'll pause and take a catch breath in between. So let's just follow along. The focus of this practice is at Agnya Chakra, which is about three fingers in from your brow center. So you can either focus on the mechanics of the practice itself, which often is plenty to focus on. But if you're beyond that, just really bring your focus right into the third eye. Okay, Agnya Chakra. So let's start together. Exhaling the breath out. Nice inhale, about 80%. And begin. All the way out. You can take a little catch breath or not. Go right into the next. And just pause and see how you feel. So you can see this can be very light, very gentle. It doesn't have to be a big old forceful anything. It can be very subtle. And then we're going to do one more, but I'm going to go back to my mat. So I'm just going to stop the sound so you don't hear the, the dogs in the background and the saw at the mill over there. OK. So just coming into your comfortable seat. If you're not there already, if you moved close to me, go back now and just find your seat. So should anyone not do Kapalabhati? The only person who I can think of who should not do it at all would be someone whose sinuses were completely blocked up. But if you do it daily, it helps your sinuses never be blocked up, right? So. The, the, how, the how is how softly you can do it. You can do it really gentle like a rabbit. You can do it more forceful if you have to clear out some stuff. You can do it with more force. You can do more rounds. You can just keep going ad finitum because there is always an exhale after that inhale. Exhale, inhale, inhale, exhale. Every single time you're breathing out, then you're breathing in, okay? So let's try it one more time. Let's keep it slow and let's keep it light, very light. So no big pulls of anything. Really keep it light and almost effortless, okay? Exhaling the breath all the way out, belly to spine. Bring in an inhale at about 80%. And let's begin.
And if your eyes are closed, keep them closed and just let yourself be in the effect of the practice for a moment. Notice your head region. Let the breath that's coming in now go to the back body as well as the front. Just feel the expansion all the way around the thoracic cavity, all the way around your chest. Breath is soft, uncontrolled, but you're letting it go back. Imagine where it's going in, the prawn. We're going to slide right into a meditation, keeping our eyes closed or with a soft gaze to the floor. Letting the breath be just enough to sustain you, no control at all. And then I want you to think of the energy that you just created in your body, this pranic energy from the practice of pranayam. And then imagine that energy right at your solar plexus. Just imagine the solar plexus is light. You see a candle flame there. And that candle flame just begins to grow in brightness until the prawn is all the way inside of your body from your knees to your toes, to your hips, all the way up, shoulders, arms, and hands, all the way up, neck and head, feeling your whole body illuminated with this pranic energy. The cleansing of the head region where all of our sensory perception is processed. Breath is soft and shallow. And letting your mind go to the mantra that controls the solar plexus. Rung, rung. Rung, rung, rung. Rang, rang. Rung, rung, 
Rang. Rang, rang, rang. Releasing the mudra, the mantra, untethering the mind to the thought of Ram. And just coming back into your natural state, notice where you are with the senses, letting your eyes flutter open gently, just noticing the sound of my voice in your ear. Any smells in your room? the touch of yourself on the floor, on the mat, on a cushion, the taste in your mouth, the last taste of tea or toothpaste, whatever you have. And just coming back into this physical body for a moment and just noticing if that cleaned skull gave you a, a, a sharper perception of nothingness when you were beginning your meditation. And I'd like to hear about that at the end of class, but just noticing if Kapalabhati served the purpose of skull shining for you. Okay, so here we are in our cross-legged easy condition. <laughs> so whatever you were sitting in, let's switch the leg that's in front and come to the one that you didn't like so much. Okay, good. And this one for me needs a block underneath one. And because I want to even them out, I'm going to put a block underneath the other for a moment. And then let's do the cat movement from right here. So like place your hands on your knees, lean back, curl the spine, and then come forward as you bend the elbows and pull yourself forward and gaze up a little. And then roll the shoulders down, lengthen the back body. Tuck the chin in and then come up in the elbows. So your arms are the fulcrums that are moving you. And again, slowly. Good. One more time. And then come into a neutral spine, good. And then just let's take the right hand over to the left knee and the left arm behind us, no twisting yet. So we're still right here in the center looking forward. Just got my arm crossed over, good. And then I'm gonna roll open my left shoulder and help that twist my torso over to the left and then exhale back. So I'm gonna inhale, open the shoulder, twist, and exhale, return. 
inhale, open the shoulder, twist, exhale, return. So your left arm is quite mobile. Inhale, open the shoulder, elbow moves, look over. Let's stay here for a breath. And exhale, return. And just relax both arms on your knees. Notice if one side of the body feels a little different than the other, left to right. And then just placing your left hand on your right knee, right arm back behind you. Good. So you haven't twisted yet. Don't twist yet. Keep your sternum to the front. And then roll the right shoulder open and twist. Exhale, return. Inhale to twist. So you have some breath to resist against as the spine moves and rotates. And come back. Inhale, lift and twist. Exhale, return. Inhale, lift and twist. Exhale, return. This one will stay. Lift and twist. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Return. Good. And then let's make some circles. Let's go right sit bone toward the tailbone, left sit bone toward the pubic bone. Go right around it. Notice the base of the body and how you can feel that area being stimulated as you do that. Good. Pelvic floor all the way back. You can lift the pelvic floor a little. Okay. Now let's switch the legs again. Come back into the one that was more comfortable for you beginning. Good, and then a little side extension. So just lean over until you get a nice long line of energy, a nice long line. Take the arm up. So we haven't gotten any side extension really yet. We're just leaning over from the hip. And then bend the left elbow and arc the spine over to the left side. Keep your head as an extension of your spine. Don't just drop it. And then press the arms up. And then other arm, find that long line on a, on a very straight right arm, not locked straight, but straight. And then bend the elbow and reach over to the right, arcing over, arcing, 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 and then come up. Good, okay. Now let's twist again over to the left side. Good, just stay there for a breath or two. And then come back to the center. And let's twist over to the right side. Stay for a couple of breaths. And back to the center. Great. And then we're going to come up onto our knees into our table pose. Good. Remember in table, knees are underneath the hips, wrists are underneath the shoulders, the hands are in front. Good. So just coming into your table pose, you're looking at the floor for a moment. The tops of the feet can be down onto the floor and push all 10 toenails deeply into the floor. Good. And then begin to press into your hands, especially big fingers, and then begin to arch the spine as you lift the spine toward the ceiling, tuck your chin into your chest, look back towards your belly button and hold this as you breathe. And then we're going to slowly come into neutral, just unwinding. Now curl the toes under, press the ball of the foot toward the floor. Toes are curled under, very active legs. And then draw the chin through and up as you curl the tailbone toward the back of the head, back of the head toward the tailbone. Really press into the floor. Hands are active. And then Come back into your neutral spot. Good. And then lay your feet out for a moment. Just lay the feet out one more time. Great. And then reach back with your left foot, left foot reaching back. Press through the heel. So get really long in the left leg, press through the heel, and then release the leg. And then press through the right. 
and release the leg. Good. One more time, left. This time let's join the right. Press into the floor with your arms and hands. Get a nice long line of energy. So no piking, long line of energy. You can always drop to your knees and have that be your long line of energy. No drooping, pull, pull it all in. Good. And then let's walk the hands back and come into kneeling for a moment. Just coming into kneeling. Great. Just reach back and hold on to your left leg for a minute. Just hold on to your left leg. Feel, hopefully you can feel that action in your quadricep that it's lengthening a little. Hopefully it's not too much. Don't do too much. You don't have to pull it in a lot. You can just hold it out here wherever you've got it. And then release the left one, curl it under again, and then bring the right one in. Once you get it there, you can point the toe or keep it flexed, whichever is most comfortable to you. But just hopefully you'll get a little bit of sensation in your right quadricep, the front of the thigh. Good. And then release it nice and tall. Up, upright, roll your shoulders back and down and just show your sternum. So we're not going any further. We're not going to a full camel or anything. We're just trying to show our sternum to the ceiling. The chin can stay all the way tucked in. It does not have to go back. Your shoulders are relaxed and released. They all come back to neutral. Good. And then let's go ahead and take our right leg out in front, right leg in front. And again, I want you to come away from that back leg enough. So I've made a decision not to be in this even place for a moment. I made a decision to go a little bit further so that I'm getting a little bit of movement in my psoas, a little bit of extension there. Good. Front knee is right over the ankle. And then just sweep the arms up, not too far up, just up. Good. And then sweep them down as if you were sweeping the palms down. Good. And then sweep them back. And from here, flip the palms out to the side and raise your arms up overhead. Just notice a difference in the shoulder girdle. And again, now sternum is facing the ceiling. And then let's take the arms down in the front and just rest the hands on the leg, on the thigh. Great. And then let's take a little twist. So go ahead and keep your left hand on your right knee and open your right arm back behind you as you twist to the right, but hold on, don't let the right knee travel. Good, and then come back, replace the arm, and then come back up and draw back the right leg. Okay, curl the toes under. We're gonna do the same thing on the left side. So just reach it forward, good. Hold on, and then you can creep that leg out a little bit so that you get a little bit of sensation back in your right psoas muscle. Good, and the front knee is over the ankle, not beyond. So even if you have it a little bit beyond, it's too much of a stretch there. Go ahead and bring the ankle out underneath the knee and then sweep the arms up, not too far. Keep the shoulders separate. I know you know what I mean when I say that, like don't hunch them together, keep them in their own place, each of them. And then take the arms, make some claws and just, Claw down the wall in front of you and all the way back behind you. And then when you get back, just open the palms out to the side. And from there, raise the arms up overhead. Good, and show the sternum to the ceiling. And then let's just float the arms down right to the knee again. Good. 
and then let's come back. Great. Lay your feet out for a moment. Take your hips towards your heels. You can always curl the toes under if this is uncomfortable. If that doesn't feel good, just curl the toes under and sit there. Otherwise, sitting and lengthening the ankle. Good, just see if you can keep your heels headed to the ceiling for a sec, just so that little bit of pressure on the front of the ankle. Good. And then let's curl the toes under and come to standing. Great, okay, all right. So just for a minute, just shake out, shake out your legs, just shake them out all the way. And then give a little bit of a massage into your quads. So just reaching in, let the muscle just a little bit, especially into the one right underneath your, or the one in middle, in the middle. Okay, good. And then now back to the back of your mat. Great. Oh, we forgot to twist to that side. So we'll do twice to that side now that we're standing up because we're gonna do the same thing, but a higher lunge, okay? So let's go ahead and start with our right leg. Right leg steps forward. Okay, good. Oh, no, let's start with our left leg because we want to twist twice to the left. Okay, sorry. <laughs> start with our left leg. Okay, up, come up here. Good. So now sweep your arms back, that last part of it. Open your heart, open your chest, open your sternum toward the ceiling and come here. Good. And then bring the arms out to the side. And then you're gonna take your right arm to your left leg and open to the left. Good. And then sweep the arm up. Good. It's a little bit easier. Let's just exhale to the front. Good. And then head back. Good. So now with our right leg, take a right lunge, lunge forward, knee is over the ankle, back heel is up. So we're in flag pose, not warrior one, our leg is, our back heel is up. And then sweep the arms back, arms are open, bring the arms up, show the sternum to the ceiling. Expansiveness, brilliance. And then bring the arms down. And then begin to twist out to the right. You can hold on to your thigh. That'll help make sure the leg doesn't travel. And then come back into the center. And then let's exhale to the front. <sighs> Good. Let's do one more time to the left. My Ida side can always use a little extra work. All right, exhale, left leg forward. Good, ready. Sweep the arms back and up overhead. And then let's go ahead and take the right arm down to the left leg as we open to the left. Good, and then come back into the center, arms overhead, and let's exhale to the front. <sighs> Excellent, okay. And then let's come back into the middle of our mat now and walk the legs far apart. <clears throat> so just abduction, no rotation yet. And I want you to find what we call flat back, which has all of your natural back curves. It doesn't mean flat like a, a plumb line. It just means if you were to go to, against a wall, you'd have your bottom, your shoulders, and the back of your head on the wall. And you'd have all of your natural curves. So we're hinged at the hip, gazing at the floor, crown of the head right in front. Take your heels behind your second and third toe. Make sure your heels are not in, that means you have external rotation. So heels are hidden behind your second, third toe. 
pull in your belly, pelvic floor is engaged. Good, and we're gonna take a twist here. So holding on to your block or hand on the floor with your left hand. Let's put our right arm somewhere along our sacrum, just reach it over a little bit. You can even like let your hand just drape off the left side because we're gonna again, use that right shoulder to open as we twist to the right, keep your hips stable and exhale, return. So don't go further than it feels comfortable. Belly is in, pelvic floor is in. You're not twisting at all in your low back. You're twisting just in your thoracic spine and you're building little by little. And this last time, we're gonna stay in the twist, press the block against the floor. And then you can take your arm up overhead if you'd like. The palm will be facing in the same direction as you're gazing. And then release the arm and the gaze and everything back parallel to the floor. Good. And then we're gonna switch and place our right hand there, okay? And then just rest your left hand somewhere along your back. You can even let the arm just hang off because we really wanna see how the shoulder can begin that twist for us, keeping it and making sure it's in the thoracic. So engage your legs, pull in the quadriceps and then inhale, twist to the left, exhale, return. Inhale, shoulder opens, sternum follows and return. Keep your legs active and return. This time we'll stay. And then you can take the arm back and up if you'd like, but you don't have to. You can just keep your arm right along your back. We wanna make sure we have our, our twist in the thoracic and then cartwheel over back to neutral, nice neutral spine. Good, and let's put the hands to the top of the thighs, take a nice inhale, lengthen tailbone to the crown of the head, and then exhale up. Good, just a little bit of rotation over to the left. Good. And then let's bend it and come back. Just a little bit of rotation. I've got my hands right on the groin so I can feel what's happening with my psoas and then externally rotate to the right. Good, and then unrotate. And then let's go one more time to the left, straighten the leg and then unrotate and to the right. and unrotate, okay? Come back over, find your flat back. For just a moment, try to reach the arms out to the sides. It takes a lot of power, pull in your belly, and then exhale up. Good. See if you can take your feet just a tiny bit further apart, just a smidgen, maybe one centimeter, and see how that feels on both of your hips. If it feels too much, walk those feet back in one centimeter that you put afar, afar and maybe even a tiny bit more. We're gonna again, rotate. So lift and rotate the left leg, straighten the leg. And then we're leaning over just until we get that lean and that long line of energy. My left arm is just like a pendulum. And then my right arm reaches toward the ceiling and my left arm now reaches toward the floor. Good. Torso is uplifted, no collapsing. And then come back into neutral and release the arms, release the leg. Good. And then now let's rotate to the right side, straight leg. Good. Make sure your left heel is kicked out enough to give you the support in this upright position. If it's not, you'll, you'll find your torque, you'll torque your knee. Just let the right arm hang like a pendulum initially. 
and then walk the left arm up toward the ceiling with energy, reach up as if there's an imaginary something to hang on to, a maypole, and then reach the right arm toward the floor, pull in the belly, pull in the pelvic floor. Breathe. And then let's come to upright. Release the arms. Bend the knee and come back into neutral. Good. And then just heel toe enough that it's comfortable to find your tadasana. Good. Let your eyes dro drop to the floor or close them completely, whichever one. Relax your pelvic floor, your belly, your shoulders, the front of your chest around your sternum. Relax your shoulders, your jaw. And just notice where is the breath in the body. And then on your next inhale, letting your eyes flutter open, we're going to do a balance pose. We're going to do eagle. And um, we're not getting nice and soft first. Okay, so eagle legs, eagle arms. You can wrap or you can kick stand, whichever is best for you. So let's start with our legs. I'm going to do it to the side for once. Okay, so start with your legs nice and soft. Good. And then with the with the Right leg staying soft, peel up the left heel, just the heel, lift the left leg, reach it over and either wrap it or kickstand it, whichever one you'd like, and then sink down a little bit deeper. Good. And then the right arm, just bring it out in front, palm facing down, reach the right arm over and then take the left arm and reach it over the right arm. Reach them both away from far, far away and then the backs of the arms toward one another. And you can wrap the hands or not. Lift the elbows to shoulder height if they weren't already there. And then sink down still a little bit deeper. Gazing through the wrist. Breathe. And then on your next inhale, let's open up and get big and wide and walk it out for a moment. Good. And now we'll do the other side. So again, nice and soft. And then peel up the right heel. Bring it up, take it over, wrap it or kickstand it, whichever one feels best. Sink down a little bit deeper. Corn cups, take your hips. Good. And now left arm on top, right arm on right arm, sorry, right arm on top, left arm on the bottom. Reach them as far away from one another as you can, and then the backs of the arms toward one another. Hands can wrap or not. Elbows are shoulder height. And then sink down a little bit deeper. Pelvic floor is lifted, belly is lifted. Breath is in the chest. Try to put the breath in the back body. One more nice breath. And then on your next inhale, let's get big. And walk it out with some big bear steps. Good. And then find yourself in neutral. Just a brief standing Shavasana before we head to the floor. Nice and soft. Good, and then we're gonna go down through a squat and we're gonna do a twist once we get there. So you're welcome to squat and sit on your block 
or come down all the way. And you're welcome to also be up on the ball of the foot rather than fully on your foot, that's fine. Wherever your squat is. is. Good. Bring your arms inside for a moment. Just bring them inside your knees and just rest your hands and let yourself feel that embryonic C curve. Tuck the chin in. And then walk your hands back behind you and just kind of lift up for a bit. So you're still lifted, but you aren't, you're still squatting. Good. And then you may want to try this from here this morning because we're going to twist to either side. You're welcome to stay down, but I want your spine to be long. So if you feel your spine is longer up, that's where we're going. Okay, good. So open yourself out to the left, nice and big. And then come back into the center. And then open yourself up to the right, nice and big. And come back into the center. Good. One more time. To the left. Long spine. And center. And then to the right. And center. Good. Excellent. And then finding your way with your to your bottom to the floor, however you can get it there. Good. So it, when you might just have a block close to you, I want you to watch for just a second what we're going to do when we go down. And I'm going to do it from here so that hopefully you can see better. Okay. I'm going to do a, a reclined twist. And I want you to look right now and just notice that if I just drop my legs over, the only place that twist is going to go is in my low back. And that is not made for twisting. And that's why your low back sometimes hurt after class, right? So that is not a twist. I want, the tw I want the twist to be in my thoracic spine. So that means where I have ribs up. So how do I start that? I lift my hips. I shift them over considerably to one side, set them down, draw the knees in. And then my whole hip comes over and my twist is now in my rib cage. So hopefully you can see that. So I'm gonna come out of it, straighten myself out. And so come down to the floor and we're gonna do it together. Taking Jatara Parivartanasan, stomach revolving pose, okay? So bend your knees, put your feet firmly on the floor, then lift your hips off the floor, shift them over to the right, one, two, three, four, five inches, set them down. Take your feet off the floor. So draw your knees in a little bit and then drop your legs slowly over to the left side. Draw your shins away as if you were seated in a chair and just open the thoracic spine. So your knees, your top knee will be a little bit shy of your bottom knee because you want your pelvic basket to be just comfy and safe. Your top knee will be a little bit shy of your bottom knee. Breathe. And then let's tuck the feet in, put them on the floor, lift your hips up, shake them out, and just be there for a moment. Drop the hips to the floor and just be. And then now let's press into the heels, lift the hips, shift them over to the left, one, two, three, four, maybe five inches, set them down. Take the feet off the floor, draw the knees in, and then drop the legs over over to the right side, keeping the twist in the thoracic spine, draw your shins away as if you were seated in a chair. So you have two right angles with the body, shins to, th to thighs and thighs to spine. If your left shoulder is not all the way on the floor, fine. It doesn't matter. You're in your twist and each twist is different. Good, and then bring your feet back toward, shake, pull yourself off the floor, shake your bottom, let it go. Good. And here, 
for just a moment while you're laying in this pose, I want you to consider a, a bridge pose for just a moment. If you're not inverting, then you're not doing bridge pose. If you're not doing bridge pose, I'm going to recommend that you do Pavan Mukhtasan, which is pulling in the knee one at a time. Okay, so you can pull the knees in one at a time. If you are inverting, you to think of just lifting the hips off and getting a long line of energy from your shoulders to your knees. So you're not inverting if you're on your cycle, if you have glaucoma, any eye pressure problems, if you have uncontrolled high or low blood pressure, you're not inverting. Or if you have a sinus infection, you're not inverting. Hiatal hernia, you're not inverting. So just deciding where you are, you're either there or you're doing Pavan Mukhtasan, just pulling in a leg one at a time, just press into the colon, into the area of Vata. And otherwise you're just in this half bridge because you have an added shoulder. So those of us who are in the half bridge, you can hold for a minute underneath you and then push your shoulders into the floor and lift your sternum toward the ceiling as you can rock your arms underneath you. Don't let your knees spray apart. Keep your knees together. Little gaze back at the ceiling behind you. Keep plenty of space in your thoracic spine. Do not look to the side, look to the ceiling. And then release the hands and release the body to the floor. Good. And then slowly and gently, we're gonna find our way into Shavasana from whichever place you are. So just reaching one leg onto the floor and stretch all the way through that leg and take that same arm up overhead and reach the whole side of the body from the tips of the fingers to the tips of the toes. Good. And then bring the arm down along the body, rest that arm and that leg. The arm, the hand needs to be below the heart. And now the other side, reach through, reach through the leg, reach the arm up overhead, reach away the fingertips and the toes. Good. And then draw the upper arm back down alongside the body and let that side relax. So you have external rotation on both legs. Both feet are just splayed out to the side comfortably. Palms are facing the ceiling. And your breath is uncontrolled. Just rest. Just let go.
slowly and gently bringing your awareness into the breath. Notice the rise and the fall of your belly or your chest, bringing the senses online, wiggling your nose, your ears, your lips, scrunching your eyes, opening your eyes, moving the fingers and swimming the toes, and then take a nice big overhead stretch. Point the toes and get as long as you possibly can along the floor. Engage your buttocks muscles as you reach, 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 and then melt buttocks, shoulders, everything. Bend your knees, put your feet on the floor. Lift your hips off, shift them to one side, and then roll over to the other side and curl up all safe and secure in embryo. And just being right there in embryo for a moment as you bring your intention for class today into your mind. Right here in embryo where you have all this potential for new beginnings. Just remembering your intention. What did you need today for self-transformation? And then taking the arm of the upper hand, place the hand in front of the face, stack the elbow on top of the wrist, and then press up. Keep your head tucked into the chest and the very last thing that just plops at the top of your spine. Finding again your comfortable seat and just being still a few more moments, letting pranayam, Tadana, meditation, concentration, and asana do their magic. Bringing the hands into the heart, Anjali Mudra. Any merit we may have earned this morning in our diligent practice of yoga, we lift it up to the welfare of all sentient beings. So remembering your intention, remember any other offerings you might have this morning, just think if there's someone else, something else that needs a little attention, a little thought. And then let those thoughts slip down from your mind symbolically into your heart from your heart to the palms of your hands. And then hold those offerings and lift them up and just let them go off into the universe. Bringing the hands slowly back into the heart. Hari Om Tat Sat. Namaste. Okay, <laughs> I'm on my way to, to talk to you. I'll be right there. Thanks, Michelle. So nice to have you here. Let me fix this so I can see you all and remove the spotlight and make it where you can talk. Great. Okay. <sighs> so how, how is everyone this morning? Cam's got babies with him. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I'm at my friend's house in Pennsylvania and they had twins January of last year. So Wow. How wonderful. Right. <laughs> twins. Hello. Say Hello, hi. Little ones. Hi, little ones. Hi. <laughs> You're on a phone call. Yeah. They can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, um, how was the Kapalabhati for you this morning? 
Any comments or questions or any thoughts about that? What I really wanted us to do was not to do that forceful belly stuff. Oh, thanks, Jen. Thanks. Jen's here. And don't forget she has class tomorrow. Same time, same place. Go through. <laughs> okay. Um, any thoughts about Kapalabhati? Oh. I don't know how to shut that off. Uh, my son left his telephone here that he was using in Guatemala. And for some reason yesterday, it hooked up to my other number. <laughs> Just by itself, Apple hooked the two phones up together because they live in the same household, I guess. I don't know. It was very weird. So, yeah. What about, what about Kapalabhati? Yes, Joanne. I don't feel it in my head. Am I supposed to feel it in my skull? Okay. Yes. And if you don't, you aren't doing it right. Right. I think I'm still doing too much belly. Yeah. That's what a lot of people do. They do it down there and they don't realize the, the power of just keeping it up in here. Like when, um, I don't know if you can see, see this. Okay. I'm going to put my hands on my ribs. And I literally can feel it totally in my head region when I do that. I feel it all in here. I feel like everything just got clean, cleansed. So what I'm not doing, um, I'm, I'm not doing breath of fire or, or I'm not doing what's required for like Bustrika or something like that. So I'm not doing, or Agni Sardoti, I'm not doing. That's breath of fire. And that's a totally different practice. That's a heating practice. That is not going to shine your skull. <laughs> Just, I mean, it, it may can for some people, but that's not the, the purpose of it. The purpose of it is just to take in a, a good breath and the breath can be, you know, you can take in a full yogic breath. You can take in a chest breath, can't take in a belly breath, but, and then you've got the breath in your chest and then you do forced exhalation, natural inhalation. So I'm going to really slow it down. I think I'm just going to come out of this one for a moment so you can see a little bit better. Okay. All right. So let's see if I can get it where you can see both. My head and my torso. All right. So Here's the belly, right? And here's the ribs. And this is where the action is. So. Okay, so I did three speeds so that you could see the speeds have nothing to do with the fact that every time I exhale, I inhale. Could you see that? Every single time there was an exhale slow, inhale slow. Exhale medium, inhale medium. Exhale quick, inhale quick. 
I never missed. I never ran out of breath and I never had to pull my belly in hard. You see my diaphragm bounce because it's like a trampoline bouncing, right? You see my belly bounce right here, but I'm not pulling anything in right there. I'm just using the diaphragm and all of its power to feel my head region. And now I don't know, Joanne, if you did that with at all that time. Yeah, and, and it helped because I was using more breath. Maybe I was just doing such a shallow breath. I couldn't. Do you feel it somewhat in your head now? Uh-huh. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Better. Yeah. Anybody else, any difference? Like if you slowed it down or went a little quicker, I found you get quicker with your, on your own, you get quicker, you know, just practice will make it quicker. You don't have to do anything to get quicker. Like if you just, if you just do, per month, just nice and slow. Then you think, notice my shoulders aren't moving. I'm not pulling anything up in here. I'm just using my diaphragm. Now I have like this little bird of a rib cage. <laughs> so you see it move, but it's not, I'm not pulling anything into it. It's literally my, the expansion of my uh, diaphragm. It's the flattening out, the contracting and the release, contract, release, contract, release, contract, release. Yeah. So anybody else, any questions? I, I want you to feel it in your head. That's my goal is that you feel it, really feel it in your head region, right? That you feel like I am so crystal clear right now for meditation. I just can't wait. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Any questions about anything else? Today, my practice, my, my goal was to ring you out. <laughs> so we did all of the twisting and really hopefully helping to, uh, it's chilly here, hopefully helping to um, really give your whole spine that flexibility, right? The up and down flexibility and then the side to side flexibility and then the rotating flexibility that really can happen only in the thoracic spine. <clears throat> so do, yes, you, you. Yeah, thank you for clarifying the uh, Kapala Bhati. It's very helpful. And also I really enjoy the twisting today in all different kinds of position. I noticed that uh, in a few occasions, you instructed us to lift the hip and then roll to one side before doing the twisting. That's really helpful, it makes everything easier for me. So I'm just wondering why that makes easier. Well, because the the, otherwise it goes in your low back. It, it doesn't, you don't twist in your spine. Your, your low back is not made for twisting. And if you do not lift your hips and move them, then you can't get the twist up into your low back, up into your upper back where it belongs. It stays down there. So the twist is minimal. And it, like this thoracic space is where you have all this rotation. Like when we, you know, we open our arms and you open your arms, you know, you want to, you want the rotation to happen up in this area. And that takes a lot of movement and flexibility, you know? Yeah. Yeah. This is where the action is, where you've got ribs is where the thoracic spine is so happy rotating and twisting the thoracic spine just loves to twist the lumbar can't <laughs> it really it, it shouldn't it, it's but it's meant to bear heavy weight it's big and fat and has very little movement right the, the the disc and then your cervical spine it's got that beautiful little atlas axis at the top so that's just one thing that you know it just goes all the way over so that really depends upon your mobility and all of the, the little bitty C, they're flexible, but it's really the one at the top that goes broop, broop, in either direction. Yeah, there's just the two of them that make that possible. Yeah. I have one more question about yes, that Joanne. same pose. If our knee is very different on one side than on the other, 
is there a way to correct that? Just keep doing it on that same side or? Yeah, it's good. Like if it's really different uh, on the tighter side, you could do it twice, you know, do it once on the tight side, once on the better side, and then once again on the tight side, but don't force it because that usually uh -huh. means that you have some, some sort of um, limitation in the hip socket, right? So the acetabulum, the way that it rotates in there, it's, it's limited. And so you might, you could inflame it if you overly do it, right? So you want to do it, but you want to just be aware that that hip has a, a limited movement compared to the other one. Yeah, I just have had to accept it that my right hip doesn't do what the left hip does, period. For you, it's my left hip doesn't do what my right hip does. <laughs> Yeah, every time I do something on my right side, or your right side, which is my left or my right side, my right, this, this hip for me is my limited hip. And this is my all flexy goosey, you know, so that, that this one's all comfortable, but the other one, not at all. So they act very differently. And I try to, I try to treat them somewhat differently, like children. <laughs> you don't treat your kids exactly the same, right? They each have their own needs. <laughs> I was going to ask you one question. Uh, I thought today you were going to do camel, but would you be doing the same openings and strengthening your thigh muscles, all of that, even when you're doing a camel, right? I would. And I was thinking about doing that at the end before we went down the bridge, but then I saw the time. Okay. okay. Just yeah. trying to understand the logic. Yeah, it's the same thing. All of that opening we would have done, all of that gets us really flexy in here, you know, because that's where we need to do a camel. We need right. to, and it's the thoracic spine. Like you just take your, your already beautiful lumbar spine and you just add on it one vertebra at a time. And what you don't want to do is just like lean back on that shelf so that like there are some people here that they'll put all of their weight right here and just kind of lean back from there. I can't even do it, but it's really not. You want to spread it with every single vertebra all the way you know okay. yeah thank you good well it was wonderful hanging out with you hopefully have a great tuesday and i hope to see you thursday and you can sing me happy birthday because friday's my birthday <laughs> yes who would have thought it i would have another one by myself <laughs> who would have thunk, thunk it <laughs> here we go all right, everyone. Thanks so much. Have a great week. Appreciate you and hope to see you Thursday morning. Ciao.